Hey everybody and welcome back and we're taking a look uh, another look at the Tamiya Rising Fighter. I uh, ran this one a couple well, I don't know a few weeks ago I guess um, out on the track for the summer series and currently sitting in fourth place uh, for being pretty much the most budget buggy that you can get from Tamiya. This car runs really well um, again but it could definitely use some oil shocks so we did the run and at some point I was planning on getting the shocks for it I just haven't done it and probably a couple weeks ago a subscriber reached out to me and said hey keep an eye out there's a package coming for you from Amazon to help you with a project and uh, that subscriber if you watch my little channel I'm sure you all already know about him but if you haven't, uh, the guy that reached out to me was Adam from Adam's Playground. And again, if you haven't heard of him, I'm going to link his channel down in the description. Um, but I'm sure you guys all know him. Just a great guy. A lot of great content. Uh, really smart with the cars and the kits. And uh, overall, just a real pleasure to watch. Um, so at the end of that week, package arrived. And... Uh, Adam wanting to do something nice sent uh, some Tamiya hop ups. Uh, they're uh, CVA shocks, oil filled shocks. Uh, I was I was blown away that Adam wanted to do that. So Adam, once again, thank you very much. And uh, you know this should definitely help make this car a little bit more controllable. I would think. Uh, so we'll get putting the shocks together and, and maybe I'll throw together a, a little run video with some thoughts or something. Well, all right guys, the oil shocks are fitted onto the Rising Fighter. And uh, I don't know if you happen to notice it in the drop test, but uh, this particular one's got a little bit of that lunchbox uh, front suspension going on, but there's a reason for that. And before I talk about that, uh, Adam, I want to apologize to you for not reaching out to you about this. But uh, in my eyes, that would be like looking a, a gift horse in the mouth, and I'm not going to do that. Um, but looking at these, because the time where I did the first part of this video, this is actually uh, about a week and a half or so later. Um, so pulling out the, the sets here, we see that... Uh, 50520 is on the placard for both packages and uh, this one here is, is for the rear shocks and if you look on the on the back of the placards uh, this one here if I can get in there it says come on Jeremy it says 50520 which is correct it's the back ones and then you look at this other one and it says that it's the 50519, which would be for the front. But, uh, you know, obviously that's not the case. That must have been something done uh, at the individual retailers on their end. But again, uh, so I thought about leaving the stock front shocks on there. But actually taking them off uh, to begin with, I noticed that one of the front uh, shafts were bent anyways. But uh, regardless... Um, I set this up to, to, you know, to droop as much as possible. This might come down a little bit in time with running as well. But I'm going to go ahead at some point. I'll get the 50519s ordered and fitted back on this car. Um, but yeah, I think from that drop test, you can see, you know, just adding the oil shocks is a huge difference. So I've currently got a battery charge and I've got the other cameras charging and, uh, We'll give it a quick rip and I'll show you guys and then we'll come back for a quick wrap up.
post-run check-in. Wow. Uh, this thing handled indeed a lot better. I mean, it's still a hopper chassis and with that rear axle set up on, on these kinds of chassis, you're still going to get bounciness no matter what. But this thing really, particularly to me, from what I noticed on the jumps, it landed them a lot more cleanly. Um, much greater chance of landing this car on all four wheels uh, off the ramp and it's staying after that initial jolt coming back down off of the ramp. Uh, it did quite well and definitely um, an upgrade worth it. And while I was sitting here waiting for that battery to finish charging so I could get out and test it, I kept thinking to myself, Jeremy, what can you do for now to get these front wheels to sit more evenly to compress those shocks? Um, and because they're black, you might not notice it. But all I did for right now is I just took a simple zip tie and I ran it up over the shock tower here and I ran it underneath the A-arm on both sides just to get that uh, that camber a little bit better and uh, it was a whole lot better. So, you know, that fix will work for now. It's not something I'm going to do long term. But, yeah, I just wanted to check in with my afterthoughts after putting these shocks on there. What a world of difference. Um, you know, and there's going to be plenty more to come on this buggy. Uh, you know, for being such a, a budget-oriented uh, kit from to me, I mean, other than the Candy Green Grasshopper, I believe this is our most inexpensive buggy kit. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Once again, a massive shout-out to Adam over at Adam's Playground. Uh, the generosity in this community never ceases to amaze me. And, you know, Adam, I don't know what possessed you to do it, but once again, my friend, a huge thank you. And... I'll link his channel once again down below in the description, but like I said earlier in the video, if you're watching my little channel, odds are you already know who Adam is, but perchance you haven't heard of him, go check out his channel because it's awesome. Guys, if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. That's going to do it. Thanks, as always, for taking some time out of your day to check out my videos. And until next time, everybody stay safe. We'll see you around.